Welcome to CSL TV. And I just hope you guys are having a beautiful, blessed day. Um, you know, I got some crazy news to tell you. And as always in the news, it's mostly bad. But I will try to find some good to try to even it out some. But before I get into that juicy content, you guys can help me out by subscribing to the channel. And the best thing about doing that is you'll be doing a good deed. As well as in liking the video and commenting down below what made you watch CSL TV. The feedback helped me bring you guys content different ways so i know you know i'm not just showing y'all the regular degler and just you know uploading the video and blah 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 but if you have a social media platform go ahead and share me on your social media platform um to let people know what we do over here at csl tv but if not that's cool too now i don't want to make this intro too long so i hope you guys have a having a beautiful blessed day let's get it This video out of Texas is shocking. It all went down in San Antonio at this McDonald's parking lot a little over a week ago. A cop thinks he recognizes a car that got away from him the night before. The officer approaches the vehicle and opens the door only to find a teen eating a hamburger. Get out of the car. What? The cop and teen get into a scuffle and as the teen's car reverses, the cop opens fire. Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! The cop gets off around 10 shots as the teen drives away. Soon after, the teen is found down the road and taken to the hospital in critical condition. The cop, a 7-month rookie of the force, originally claimed he opened fire because the teen had struck him with the car. But, as the body cam shows, that's not the case. The cop was fired after this went down, and on Tuesday, he turned himself into the police and was charged with two counts of aggravated assault. The 17 year old's family says the teen is still unconscious and on life support. Now what this sound like to me is that the police officer um, was feeling some type of way because whoever he thought this kid was, um, he wanted to get him that bad because he got away. He couldn't accept the fact that we don't always win or we don't always get or have the outcome that we want. And we have to face that, you know what I'm saying? So he felt that this could possibly be the kid that he was, you know what I'm saying, looking for or that got away. And that's why he chose um, the path. Well, had chosen the path that he did. I just hope this kid, you know what I'm saying, pull it through. Um, that's real sad to be just sitting there eating a burger. And then next thing you know, a fucking police officer come off fucking with you. And, you know... Now your car get impounded, you didn't, you know, you just all messed up, you know. So, uh, like I said, I hope that kid pulled through. Uh, I'm praying for the family. First up, we're in Broward County Circuit Court in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where Judge Stephen Zakor is holding bond hearings via closed circuit TV. This is Julio Torres, who doesn't seem too excited about the proceedings. Good morning, Mr. Torres. 24-year-old Torres may look tired because he was arrested late the night before. He's charged with resisting arrest, trespassing, and violating his probation. Your bond on count one is $100. There's no additional charge for count two. You'll be held no bond on the Dade County violation of probation. Why did I get a trespass? Despite his microphone being turned off, Torres continues to question his trespassing charge. I assume the microphone's off by design, Mr. Romero. Your Honor, he's wanting to know the nature of the probable cause determination for count two on the trespass. The nature? I found probable cause, if that's what you mean. Excuse me? Turn, him, turn the mic on. Hey, no, bring him back. Come on, bro. After the insults, Torres decides to hit the judge with something else. A couple of verses. Uh, are you ready? So we steady like we friendly because you know I'm going to do this. Man, you're, you're so wack, dog. Man, yo, just take off all the charges. Hey, man. As Torres continues what's becoming a nonsensical rant. Now nah, I'm going home right now. Just leave me outside or shit. I don't know. The public defender interjects. Your Honor, at this time, I believe he may require a mental health screening, Your Honor. What makes you say that? You're charged with trespassing and like homosexuality and rape and all that I didn't charge you with anything, sir. That's what I'm charging you with. 
Oh my goodness, uh... Mr. Torres, I can tell you, is there any reason right now I should not hold you in direct criminal contempt for your behavior in the court? Uh, when to quote, you just said, F you judge, end quote. Do you have any explanation of why you would say something like that? I'm God. Yeah. The judge doesn't entertain his holier-than-thou claim and hands down an additional charge. I find you in direct criminal contempt, and I hereby sentence you to 60 days in Broward County Jail. So my thing is, why was this dude showing out in court the way he was showing out? Like, Brody, come on now. Like, what is the problem? You didn't got your butt some days in jail for nothing. And you probably wasn't even about to really get nothing. You know what I'm saying? And then you had a good court appointed because he was trying to get you to go to the crazy place. And the judge was like, no, nah, he ain't crazy. He know what he's doing up here going. How the fuck you a, a magician or something, boy? Like, you up here, you know what I'm saying? Just up here tripping. But anyway, we about to go ahead and see what they doing in the court. You know what I'm saying? Go to the next case. Now to Jefferson County Circuit Court in Louisville, Kentucky. 27-year-old Damon Hobbs is being sentenced for second-degree manslaughter. At the microphone, a woman is sharing her impact statement with the court. Children who have lost their father over something senseless and sisters who have lost their brother and a, their best friend. One of the victim's sisters, Tina Strange, is seated in the gallery. Sensing that she's upset, someone nearby offers her a tissue, but that won't be enough to calm her down. And we're here today, we want the court to know how, how we feel that he didn't get enough. So what caused the victim's sister to lash out? She claims the woman sitting next to her was snickering throughout the proceedings. After throwing the violent sucker punch, Tina Strange is charged with contempt of court, sentenced to a day in jail. So this is sad, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he got what he got, but if that was really going on and that lady was smirking and all this stuff giggling in the courtroom, that can really set somebody off who's really emotional, knowing that they did something that they probably didn't mean to do, or I don't know. I really don't know, I can't speak on his situation. All I can speak on is what we saw, and, and she was up here speaking about, you know, she was up there laughing and stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I just think uh, they shouldn't be, they shouldn't have been sitting that close to each other anyway, to be honest. She should have been on one side, the other girl should have been on, other individual should have been on the other side. That would have solved a lot. And them sitting next to each other, that, that just was off. You know what I'm saying? Most people don't do that. Because that's just what you do. Good morning. Are you Virginia Wagner? I'm Miss Wagner. Next, we head to Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. The defendant, 85-year-old Virginia Wagner. The charge, reckless driving and driving with a suspended license. The vehicle, a souped-up Dodge Dart. You had, you, had like that, race car. you had that fast car. I know you did. <laughs> you didn't need that fast car. <laughs> Wagner doesn't refute the charge, but places most of the blame on the car itself. I'm sorry it happened, but uh, the car that I was driving, was like, it was like a race car. It had an extra motor in it. The car is not going to be driving anymore. Okay. I would recommend the $100 fine. All right. Do you understand the offer from the Commonwealth is that you would plead guilty to operating on a suspended license? And you would have to pay a hundred dollar fine. I know it now. Okay. Did you understand though that? Do you want to accept that and plead guilty today? Yes. Uh huh. I'm guilty. Yeah. As a packed gallery looks on, Wagner finishes up her business. That is until. Yes, sir. An unusual request is submitted to the judge. 
Ma'am, he wants to pay your fine. A good Samaritan who gave his name as Mike Evans offered to pay Wagner's fine. So, Miss Wagner, you go down. Sit here and I just take paper. Yeah, you, you give him your paper and he's going to go down there and pay that for you. Thank you, sir. Wagner appreciated the man's generosity, but after initially accepting his money, she later returned the cash, paid the fine herself, bringing an end to Virginia Wagner's time behind the wheel. You usually don't see nice stuff like this. It's good to see some good in the courtroom for once, even though the old lady says she came back and took care of it herself. Um, it's still nice to see people doing good things to help each other, you know. For the simple fact, you don't usually see stuff like that in the courtroom. You always see somebody acting irate, fighting, cussing the judge out, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? That's what you usually see, but just to see, you know, something like this is, is really good because, yeah, you just don't see, you just don't see nothing like that. Um, she said that Dodge Dart had that 2.0 supercharger, twin supercharger, is bored over and everything. She said that baby too fast, too fast.